Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. Today we are doing something very different that we've, I mean, guess not done before other than when we've been off places and been filming live. Although we've got ground support with Katie and Amanda remotely moderating this, I am it. I am cameraman, I am host, I am, I'm just doing everything. So today, this is an episode on long handle brushes. You can see from behind me, these are just my oil brushes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say, but I, my name is Amy and I'm a brush lord. So, um, so long handle brushes are a tool, a lot of people ask what's the difference between long and short handle brushes. Long handle brushes are for easel work, where you're standing and working, where you're doing things at an easel, where it's vertical, where you need to get back from it. And I know that's something that most of us are guilty of doing, but if you're holding that brush at the correct spot, you're getting back far enough where you can see mistakes you're making, you can correct them as you work, rather than sitting at a table, getting up after hours of work, walking across the room, and then you see those fatal flaws that you're like, I'm so far into it. Do I really go back and make that correction? So we're gonna talk about those. Next week, we're gonna be doing short handle brushes, okay? And kind of what I've decided to do with these is instead of show you the brush strokes that these brushes make, we're going to do the brush education today, and then I believe I'm responsible for a live on Thursday of this week. Um, so we're going to finish up um, painting that we did of the high heel shoes with the Lucas 1862 paints. So what I'm gonna do at that time when we do that is I'm going to show you the different shapes of brushes and the types of strokes they make as I finish that painting up step by step for you guys. So we'll talk about why I'm choosing those brushes at different times when I'm making that painting and kind of what, what that's giving me for a tool. So it gives you a little bit more insight rather than just talking about it, we'll actually be doing it. So today we're going to be looking at long handled brushes themselves. So I'm gonna walk over here to the setup that I've made Again, excuse the, the zoom noise, as it were. Uh, just my life and, and how it is. So, all right. Now, something I decided to do for you guys. Um, while this is going on, not next week, but the week after this episode, I actually put together a little kit. A lot of people have asked about soft pastels. So we're going to do a soft pastel class. And I've already got the cart up online. It's JL, let me double check, 146, okay? So to find the cart, you go to the jerrysartorama.com website, you type in JL146, it will pull up the cart. It's less than $25 worth of supplies. And even if you just get the pastel set, I believe it's a little pastel set of uh, 32 half pastels, I'll show it to you in just a second. You can type in live 146 into the code box and it will give you free shipping. So it's just the cost of that and free shipping if you want to participate. And that class will do a step-by-step -step pastel drawing together. And then maybe we'll do some other ones kind of as it goes and plan them from there. If this kind of creative sequestering continues, um, we'll continue using that, okay? So let me show you the set real quick. I'm gonna switch and then we'll look at the brushes. All right, so we've got, it's a great little pastel set of half pastels. Um, it's a, a tool kit. And then it also has colored drawing paper as well. And it looks like I'm seeing something about sound, but it looks like we've got it. Let me up the sound just in case. It's as loud as it goes. So if you're not getting sound, check your monitor, um, check your phone. Uh, double click on the video itself. It may be that you haven't opened the video yet and that's why you're not getting sound, guys. All right, so that's the kit. JL146 and the code is LIVE146 to put in, okay? All right, so let me move this out of the way. And we're gonna start talking about brushes, all right? Now, let's check the notes here. Designs of long handled brushes. Short handled brushes usually have way more types of designs. And this looks weird because I've got blue paper here and then I've got regular white paper. 
that's for a reason. So when we have light handled or light bristles, we can hold it over the blue, and then we've got the white for the dark bristles. Okay. All right. So what are these designs for, and and why is this important to you when you're doing easel painting with acrylics, with oils, with water mixable oils, with any kind of heavier bodied medium? Okay. Rounds. Rounds are not quite the same when you've got these in long handled bristles because you've got all sorts of different types of hair. In short handled brushes, it's for your very tight refined detail. In long handled brushes, it depends on the hair as to what those are really for. Okay guys, so as we talk about these different hairstyles, we'll talk about what is going to be giving you um, kind of the better type detail in some of these specific shapes. Um, a bright, bright is hair that is the same length on the side as it is the width across the top. A bright gives you very, very tight control with the brush, but it doesn't have the extended hair like a flat or a filbert does to hold that extra medium, okay? So it's really good for shorter strokes, for very quick kind of tight, kind of cutting something in around an edge. It's a much more controlled brush not your heavy weight as far as carrying materials, okay? So a flat, a flat is going to be kind of almost twice the length that it is the width across, depending on the manufacturer. Some make them a little bit longer, some make them slightly shorter. It just kind of depends on the hair, it depends on the manufacturer, um, but for the most part, that's kind of a good basis of what actually, you know, to kind of expect when you're ordering those brushes. Um, a flat gives you a longer, smoother stroke when you pull that brush down. Um, it holds more medium, and it's a good general all-purpose brush. If you're rough on flats, especially bristle brushes on the edges, you will tend to hone your own filbert over time. Filbert is another brush that gives you great control but has a little bit more length for um, being able to manage a longer stroke. Um, on edge, a bright, a flat, a filbert can give you a pretty decent line if you're trying to control something. Yes, April, thank you for the, the commentary. Apparently she's very passionate about brushes. So a filbert, that rounded tip, can give you kind of nice little tight touches and spots, okay? But a filbert is kind of a catch-all for shapes. You can see more of the almond style filbert, that shorter and stubbier that kind of has that rounded end of an almond. Then you've got something like the long filbert. Some people call them egg filberts. Some people call them pointed. It just depends, again, on the manufacturer and the length of the hair, okay? Then there is that cat's tongue that everybody always questions. Cat's tongue is this kind of very funny little pointy kind of brush that's to me not even so much like a cat's tongue but a cat's tip of a tail it has that little touch of something where you want to put kind of in a corner that little quick point and then you can kind of press and pull out and fill the edge but it's perfect for like if you've got something square um, rectangular something like that flowers where you're trying to get that little tight spot in between petals a cat's tongue is perfect for that or even portraiture um, it's something where other brushes can do that um, kind of purpose. If you've got a very soft hair round that's very small, it may get those little touches in the corner, but this can also, when pulled and pushed down, give you kind of that nicer, flatter stroke, okay? Then a fan. The fan is a brush that everybody always has, yet no one seems to really know what to do with it. Um, I, I, for the longest time detested fans and then I used one for blending after watching a tutorial and was amazed what you can do with them. If you're trying to make um, softness in clouds, if you're trying to make um, something in portraiture very soft on cheeks or, or something like that or even a very muted background, a fan is wonderful if the paint is wet to just kind of soften colors and mix them together. It works really, really well, okay? So um, I've seen a couple questions that are we going to talk about the different types of hair. We definitely are. Okay, and I'm using proprietary brushes for this because it's the easiest way to show you different styles of hair, 
um, different shapes of brushes as we talk. Um, but this is information that applies to any types of long handled brushes, okay? Um, it's, it's just basic good knowledge um, and then I'm using these brushes as examples for that. All right, so those are the different types of shapes and kind of what they're best used for. All right, so brush components. So let's talk for a few minutes about that. I'm just gonna grab one of these here because it's a nice, easy to see brush that we've got here. This is one of those rounded filberts, kind of an almond shaped filbert. Um, it's one of the New York Central brushes. Handle. There's always information when you're um, looking at brushes online. Uh, there's always some sort of description on the jerrysartorama.com uh, pages for the different brushes. It's going to tell you all sorts of things about a f the ferrule and how it's made and the hair and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But this really is where don't ignore the yada, yada and the blah, blah, blah. You're educating yourself on kind of what these differences are between brushes and it's in those nuances that's really going to help you make good buying decisions. Um, handles may be wood like this. They may be something like um, the Dura handle brushes where it's a resin handle. Um, they could be lacquered. They could be, this is just a clear stain. It may be one color coat. It may be three or four color coats. It could be just regular, you know, a lighter weight wood. It could be a sustainably harvested wood, um, you know, that matches different types of regulations, which some people care about. So that's something that that's going to explain to you um, with that description about what it's like. Now, balance in a brush. A lot of people want to choke up on their brushes. That's when you're doing something really small and tight, kind of up close. Really, if you're painting at an easel, it's better to learn to hold them back here at the end of that brush, or even to grab them and hold them like this and use them as a tool. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, of a time to, to get used to that, but doing color charts is a great way to practice holding a brush, okay? You can always do it on just a pad of, um, of you know, an acrylic canvas pad and actually, you know, use the brush to do those small strokes and get used to how do each of those different brushes work while you're actually doing your um, color swatches. So that's something to pay attention to. I'm gonna put these lights down a little lower. It seems like this could be a little bit brighter. There we go, okay. Um, the ferrule, what's the ferrule made out of? You will hear a lot of brushes where it says that this is a um, nickel plated ferrule. What, what does that mean and why are you worried about that? Because nickel's not that big of a, you know, expensive material. What that is, is you're looking at something that's going to hold up for this ferrule itself. It's a one piece ferrule, which the old fashioned ones used to be two pieces or one piece that was wrapped around um, and pinched, kind of crimped together that you could get a lot of solvent and stuff in. You want this to be a durable material and then you want it to be nickel plated because if you're going to use solvents or things like that, it's not going to etch the, the material away. It's not going to damage it. It's going to keep it easy to clean off. It's not going to make it rust or things like that in the solvent. So when you hear somebody say that something's nickel plated, that's actually a really fantastic thing. That's something that you like. Okay, crimping. This has been crimped twice. See these little pinches here? That's where it's actually attached to the handle. And a lot of times they'll talk about, um, you know, how is that attached? Is it crimped? Um, are these glued in? Those are things that you want to know because if it's not the tip can be wobbly, wobble around, or even come off um, in some brushes. So that's something to pay attention to when you're reading the way that the brush is made. Um, when you're talking about um, the hair, is it hand tied? That means that there's an individual that's trained over years and years to actually take this hair to kind of tamp it down in a little thing to a adjust the shape of this to flatten it out to actually tie that off before it's put in and glued into the ferrule and this is pinched. They make those brush shapes very specifically. They are artisans at what they do. Yes, that makes a brush more expensive, but it also makes a more consistent brush when you have a handmade brush where 
the bristles in there are handmade, you're going to have the consistency of somebody right there doing quality control checks as they do it. And that's going to be very good at making the brush. That's going to redo it if it's not made right because it's kind of their legacy and it's their pride, okay? Um, so with the handle, is the handle balanced? When you hold it back here, is it all slopping forward? Is it too heavy? Or does it have a nice balance to the brush? When they say it's a balanced handle, they mean that it's not a super heavy ferrule that's going to dip and pull. Um, you will find that noted in the brushes that tend to be higher end and um, handmade, okay? Switch my to my next notes. All right, so we've talked about the basics of brushes, all right? Kind of what these different components are. Um, we've talked about all of these different shapes. We've talked about balance. We've talked about what the handle is made out of, what the ferrules are made out of. Let's start talking about the hair themselves, okay? Now, put this back up here so I get back to this. First, we're gonna talk about synthetics because I've got these right here um, to my right. And I'm sorry if this is a little wobbly, it's very hard to hold it and talk at the same time. All right, so Taclon. Taclon is something that if you've had synthetic brushes for a, a you know pretty fair amount of time over the years, Taclon is something that you've probably heard um, and that you might not necessarily be sure of what that means. Okay, and a golden Taclon was kind of, everybody's had these um, kind of very orange looking synthetic brushes. These have a dyed tip, so it kind of gives you more of that natural sable feel. Um, Taclon is a good multi-purpose brush. It can handle a thicker paint load with relative ease. It can handle a thinner paint load like washes and things like that. All right. It doesn't necessarily excel at either as far as that being the brush of choice for super heavy things, super light things. But if you need a brush, you don't have a lot of money to invest in multiple types of brushes. These are good workhorse brushes that are uh, that wear very well. The hair is, is very durable. It wears well. Um, that, that are a good thing that you can um, get at, you know, kind of a more economical price. Now, um, there will be different grades of, of Taclon, obviously. These are kind of just some of the, the basic ones. Um, now, with, with the door handles like this, if you were doing something like, um, let's say, you wanted to start your own paint and sip company or you're an educator. Handles like this are perfect because people inevitably do that thing where you want to, to stalk them and, and, and give them a lesson in brush cleaning where they just leave it sticking in that water pot um, or solvent. These handles are not going to crack and the paint is not going to tear away from the handles with repeated soaking. So these are a good brush for you know really heavy wear and tear where you don't have that control over it um so th as far as that goes that's good um and then these other ones you just need to be you know more diligent about giving people some quick training about kind of how to use them um all these are perfect for classrooms all these are perfect for high schools um and for you know starting out getting your feet wet in a medium the beautiful thing about taclon like these is that they work great for acrylics, which acrylics can be really rough on natural hair brushes. But these also are durable enough where they will work all right in oil over time. What you need to be you know, careful with is oil is very acidic and the solvent can eat away at these because they are a filament, which means basically like they're a polyester. They're, they're, they're a cousin you know, of the plastics. So you will really want to have good brush hygiene at the end of each painting session if you're going to be using solvents. That's not something you want just sitting in these brushes, you know, between your painting sessions, okay? So that is Golden Taclon. All right, now, um, there's something that's kind of related to Taclon, but this is the super high end, and the, these are on the Ebony Splendor brushes. These are, um, the Tygen um, filaments, which with these, what they're doing is they're using uh, multiple thicknesses of filament, which that gives you more of that natural hair 
feel to the material. It also helps with the absorbency of the brush. If you want to do a lot of glazing and things like that, these would be the Taclon type that you're going to want to use, okay? So that's something that you want to be very, um, you know, that you want to be aware of if, if you like the golden, um, you know, the golden Taclon style, but you need kind of that next step up because you've maybe got some more training or you're going to be taking classes where you're going to be learning techniques like that. These still have a good value price to them, but they're going to give you that ability. Now, I just saw something really interesting. Somebody said that Taclon is something that um, <laughs> shed worse than their Siberian Husky, which is a, a very funny thing. You need to be aware that all brush has sizing in it when it comes to you, okay? Um, it's super stuff. It doesn't even make a crunch, and I'm not going to push it to make a crunch. There are a lot of people um, that don't realize this is a starch, okay, that's been put into the bristles to make it so that it's not going to get damaged in shipping. They always put that, you know, kind of plastic sleeve over them as well, but this really protects that. Now, if you take it, which I've seen so many people do, and I always cringe and, and fight the urge to, you know, do the mom thing with them and grab them by the ear, don't take it and break that. I've seen people that break that with their hand. You want to wet it, you want to slowly work that out of there, and then you want to wash the brush before the first time you use it. And that is with any brush, whether it's synthetic or natural, it's in there because what that does is that can bend and damage and break hairs. Or if they're a synthetic hair like that, it can actually start loosening it from the ferrule and rough it up a lot where then you're going to have issues with that shedding. All right. All right, let's go to, I'm trying to find a place to put these where nobody's going to do anything with them. Let's go to the white synthetic filament. Okay. Now, these are both brushes that we do, and these are both brushes that you saw my oil brushes, but you did not see all the acrylic brushes, which I've got about the same amount. Jennifer, I just saw that you said you're guilty of breaking. We're going to have some words. Um, these are a soft white filament. It's still got the strength with these. This is just a little softer with the Pro White. It's more like um, almost a little bit firmer than like what a natural sable would be. And then these are um, with the um, the Power Krill have more of a texture that's going to be similar to slightly softer than hog's hair. All right. Um, these can work with heavy, those heavier bodied acrylics with ease. They can still work well with thin acrylics. They're a very good multi-purpose filament, okay? Um, both are durable brushes. Um, I am horribly, I like, I'm sure you've seen me scrub with brushes on the show. I have both of these and they've held up very, very well over time. Um, and the Pro White, I actually probably have the most of. Um, both of these are very, you know, inexpensive, um, you know, great starter brushes, great for people that are working at a higher level. Um, and then they're easy to clean, okay? Acrylic, or I mean, um, synthetic bristles are super easy to clean. So if you know that you um, tend to be somebody who is not the best with brush hygiene or you're using water-soluble oils, water-soluble oils, although they're water-soluble, which means you can thin them with water and you can clean up with soap and water, still aren't the easiest animal to get out of the brush, so to speak. So that's where using these synthetics make it so much easier because you don't have those natural pores in a brush. Natural hair has, you know, you've got your hairs like this, right, in a brush. Natural hair, if you look at them under a microscope, have all these lovely little pores all over. Think of it like little Swiss cheese, okay? All those pores, paint goes in and traps and gets stuck. With oil, because it's not drying right away, right, you use soap or you use thinner and that comes back out of there. With acrylic, where you haven't wet your brush before you start using it, um, just to kind of moisten that so it doesn't want to tend to stick uh, with the natural hair, that goes in there and dries. And if you've ever had those natural brushes where it starts getting the bristles when you touch 
you know, you'll have your brush and it starts getting thicker in here and thicker. And there's a little bit of kind of a discoloration debris build up, but what you're not seeing at the bottom of those um, is that build up in those pores. And over time that will get so hard in a natural brush with acrylics, that it'll be really hard to clean out. Um, especially if you're really bad about not, as soon as you're done with that color, rinse that brush. As soon as you're done, rinse that brush. So that's something that make these great popular choices um, because that smoother filament is a lot easier to clean, um, but they're still incredibly, incredibly durable brushes, okay? They've got great long lasting lives. And and with this Pro White, it's got more kind of that ability of, um, of what a Kalinske would be. Uh, nice, smooth, you can do some, some nice glazing, um, but it's still got a good point to it, okay? All right, so that's filament. And now some filaments, depending on the brand, are heat treated, um, where it will actually give you a stiffer um, kind of a bristle, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes with another brand. Let me stick these down. All right. Now something that, for sable, that where you want that feel of, of sable with a synthetic brush, we've got two different things. Okay, now I mean, we've got other brands, but these are, this is kind of more your, um, closer to a little bit more of a value line. It's the Black Swan. It's a synthetic filament um, that gives you kind of the ability to do some glazing, some, um, you know, nice, tight, more fluid work. Um, it's soft, it's supple. Um, it's very kind of, you know, goth and sexy for a brush, if you could say that. Um, very nice brushes that Creative Mark makes. Then there is, if you've ever used our short handle brushes that are the Mimic Kalinske, these are the long handle brushes. Our Mimic Kalinske short handle brushes are so much like Kalinske and perform so similarly that there will be artists that use them that want to argue tooth and nail that surely I'm telling them something false that they're not synthetic. Because what these guys do is they make all of the hair in these brushes in multi filaments okay so there's multiple filament sizes in there so like a kalinsky brush will have so it's got that ability to actually absorb it's nice and thick look how pretty and thick that is um, which kalinsky brushes are going to be thicker than a synthetic typically um, which these kind of have that beauty of both worlds still nice and thick to grab onto that moisture um, the different filament sizes to hold the moisture, and then uh, when you press down, it actually dispenses that thinned um, stuff. So when you're looking to do really tight, detailed work, this is a round that's going to do that. All of these soft um, synthetic brushes, you know, have that ability to give you more of kind of that tighter detail in the rounds because it's very soft and flexible, okay? So kind of your mid-range, this is, you're going up into that professional range with a synthetic, where it's giving you those professional results. Handmade brushes, hand uh, tied, uh, the sustainable hardwood handles, um, you know, they, they have the look of, you know, very, you know, this is going to be more kind of your luxury car of, of the paint brushes, but give you that performance too. Not that all cars can't get you where you want to go, the same thing with brushes. All brushes can get you where you want to go, but it's how you get there and what the performance is that may make the difference for some artists, okay? All right. Then we've got bristles that are more synth synthetic versions of more of how a hog bristle is going to perform. All right, these are the Mimic Hog. Now, these look like hog. They've got kind of that white, a little bit rougher, larger filament. These have multiple filament sizes, kind of like a hog bristle brush um, that's going to be used for oil. They've got the interlocking capabilities at the tip where an interlocking is something that, back to our drawing board here, if you've got your hair coming out of the brush, interlock are these little, funny little, um, you know how we get split ends on our hair? That's such a bad thing for people. Guess what, for hogs, it's amazing. They love it, because what that does is when you pull your stroke with your brush, 
it pulls those together and locks them together where it produces that nice smooth stroke with it because it grabs and holds that hair at the end. So it kind of gives you a, a longer pull with an interlocked brush because it keeps the material right at that end and releases it very evenly. Okay, so Mimic Hog is a synthetic version, which synthetics are, are there because people want an animal friendly brush. Some, sometimes in, in, in probably most instances, a synthetic is gonna be less expensive, so it's pocket friendly. Um, and they make them as close to, you know, the, the performance of a hog these can be. So these, for, for a synthetic brush, these have that ability like you would with a regular hog bristle brush. Um, for, but, but to be able to use it for acrylics. And the filaments in these were designed specially so they have like a straw in the middle. These will actually work with fluid acrylics and things like that. So we'll actually pull that up and then dispense it as you lay the strip down. Now staccato or another brush that, um, that's a Creative Mark brush that's kind of designed to be a different kind of, I love these, these gun model ferrules. They're very, very, and it looks like a brindle Great Dane. So you know that I'm gonna have to love that. But these perform great, like a hog bristle. They keep their shape really well, uh, the wear, when you scrub with the brush. Um, I love the length of the flats are a really nice long flat, which is fantastic for laying down larger strokes of color. Um, the, the little uh, rounds still keep a nice point for kind of adding dots and dabs of color. Um, filberts are amazing. These are a really great synthetic brush that's going to give you more the capabilities of hog bristle but have that super easy ability to clean from being synthetic. And they've got multiple filament hairs sizes as well, so it's really going to hold paint, especially heavy body paint, super duper easy, okay? So uh, last stop on the synthetic brush train, make sure I don't drop everything on the floor of my studio are the Berlin uh, brushes, and these are newer for us. These are handmade brushes, synthetics, um, multiple filament sizes. These are really heavy duty. They have a very nice, super consistent hog uh, performance to them. They're hand tied, so the sizes and shapes are you know, ideally consistent. It, it performs like a really nice handmade oil painting brush but yet in a synthetic. So it can give you that ability for acrylics, it can give you that ability for oils or water mixable oils. Beautiful blue stain handle, triple lacquered, so it's super durable. It's not going to um, you know, give you issues with cracking and things like that over time. If you are bad and tend to soak things here and there, it's going to be much more durable. Um, nicely plated ferrules, um, they're glued inside. Really, really beautiful. Uh, Great performing brushes. Again, beautiful. If you're a flat junkie, uh, those are just very, very nice. Even, even their brights, because they're built like a hog bristle brush, can give you a really nice edge for really kind of small, fine lines for drawing. Very beautiful brush. Um, so that's, that's where you can go from synthetics, from kind of the, um, you know, the lower priced, um, getting started, the value line for somebody who wants to be creative um, and just enjoy painting that doesn't either have a whole lot of money to invest or doesn't really want to. They're just wanting to enjoy being creative to this brush that, you know, just will really give you a, a super professional edge for synthetics. So that's the synthetics that we've got that's what kind of the differences are um this i was saying something about heat treated bristles these are heat treated so it does give them some not the cheese texture but kind of some waviness to it so that that really traps and holds paint just like a hog bristle all right so then let's go back to the natural hair brushes all right, so in every kind of manufacturing line, there are different um, kind of your paint and sip natural hair brush, your student natural hair brush, 
sorry, this set is a good set by Soho where it gives you kind of some of those, uh, a few, you know, nice synthetic um, detail brushes for when you want to do small detail and get nice, you know, tight lines. And then it's got those bigger hog bristle brushes for moving heavier amounts of paint, you know, covering background and all that. Um, so this is a great set for somebody who is either starting out, who's um, buying for schools, who's, you know, maybe even just wants to try a lot of different brushes, but wants to maybe invest more in paint for the time being. Really good, solid brushes that give very decent performance, okay? <clears throat> Let me get a sip of a drink here. All right. And all these so far are going to be natural hair and hog bristle brushes. Now, if you've ever read about brushes and you've wanted to, um, you know, you read something and it says it's Chung King and you're like, it sounds really awesome, but I'm not sure what that means. Chung King is a province in China where a specific kind of boar um, is raised specifically for hair for brushes because it has extra flagging on it. Um, it's longer, it's straighter, it just pr performs well, it makes beautiful brushes. So if you hear with any natural hair brush that something is a Chung King bristle, that's a sign of, of a good, you know, very exceptional bristle quality that's gonna have kind of those funny little flagged ends that we talked about. A lot of times it will say on those that it's boiled for softness what that's doing is not making it, you know, squishy soft. It's making it so that it gives you the ability to have really kind of that delightful brush contact with the, with your canvas where it's laying it down. It's not either so stiff that you're scraping or so, you know, squashy that you're just, you know, kind of buttering it on. It's giving you that, you know, appropriate contact um, and play of the brush as you paint that's very desirable. So the Pro Stroke are, they're one of our kind of, I think, biggest sellers in that they're economy line pricing, but they're really awesome brushes. And I've been using, I still use these, um, especially for things where I'm gonna do a lot of scrubbing and things like that because they're very durable. Um, but they're also a low enough price point where it's super easy to replace them. Um, if I am being way too rough uh, without, you know, uh, because the wear on them is about average with really expensive brushes, but the price point is so much easier to replace. So, um, so they're just a good, honest workhorse brush that any painting level can really thoroughly enjoy. Um, I've even gone to the point of with encaustics, you have to use natural hair brushes because it can cook the synthetic um, filaments, right? Because of the heat, because encaustic is heated wax that you paint with. I've taken them, cut them off so they're shorter, so they're more balanced for sitting in the kind of pans of, of paint because these are really great. And the, this line makes a super long um, pointed filbert that's great for using with encaustics. So super good. Um, that's hilarious. Um, Lynn Murray just said something about whoever dies with the must brushes wins. I'm in line for that. I'm, I'm doing my part, Lynn. I'm just telling you. So great, great value, but very good quality for the value of the brush for oils. Okay. Um, now, um, another, these are where we're starting to get into more of that, you know, nice chunking bristle. Uh, boiled for softness, the beautiful flagged ends. These laid on that paint oh, just oh, that little bit differently than those pro strokes that we just talked about did. Um, they're just slightly softer. Uh, they have actually, which a few oil brushes do, have that cat's tongue filbert um, in there that's um, that can give you kind of that little point. There we go. Sometimes it takes a minute to focus. Um, to do just like that little corner detail work. Um, but these brushes all are, are very, um, they, they really hold a lot of paint for a hog bristle. What If you've used other brands and then you try this, you can really tell the difference in them. Um, beautiful ferrules, uh, they're just 
really nice handmade brushes. Uh, that interlocking really makes the difference with laying down the paint, okay? Um, this is a great uh, 10 brush sampler set that's actually a very low price, and that's why I included it. Um, if you're looking for any of these brushes, like after the fact, to be able to go and look at them and read about them, um, the episode is JL143, let me look. Excuse me, JL144. So if you type that in the search box on jerry'sartorama.com, um, type in that keyword JL144, that will bring you to the list of brushes that we're showing. So you can kind of find some different pages, you can do some reading to educate yourself further about the brushes, okay? Um, let's look at these three uh, brushes very quickly. Um, and then we're going to look at some synthetic blends and then one kind of just out there on its own kind of a newer uh, hog bristle brush that we have for painting. Um, this line is our the New York Central Professional Control line. It kind of excels at these hog bristle shapes that there's an extra short flat. See how really short and stubby that bottom one is? And then there is the rounded kind of almond filbert where it's where it's very round and doesn't have that point to it when they called this professional control they meant it for a reason these brushes can give you very precise layering control of paint especially if you're going to be painting in a plain air setting where you are going to be doing um kind of that a la prima which means all at once painting where you want to layer thickly but with other brushes, you will actually drag the paint places. This, because they're shorter and stubbier, you can actually put it down and actually kind of, uh, you know, use it on its side and edge to actually put those tools, use it as a tool to kind of layer those bigger, thicker points of paint on. Almost like how you can with, um, with a palette knife, a painting knife, but you still have the control of a paintbrush. Um, if any of you guys have ever seen that cow that I had, that we've had on the set numerous times that we've showed, that's very bright colors. It's not traditional colors at all of, of a cow. It was done in less than two hours with these specific brushes themselves. Only those, only the filbert and then the, the, um, the little flat. Um, just because you could really kind of push it and layer it on, still have a brush stroke as opposed to a knife stroke. So it had kind of that kind of beauty of how hair lays the paint down, but you could really butter it on super duper thick. Um, so they're fantastic brushes for that, uh, for the control of, of working with heavier paint. Now, the Pro Control with the, um, the Almond Filbert, that's the SP mix, and then with the Kalinsky mix, are more those very round, almost um, almost what a um, you know wash brush looks like. Um, those big powder puffy wash brushes in a short handled brush um, for doing you know laying a lot of water on and watercolor. These are ideal for glazing, okay? Because when you've got that much hair in those super soft mixes, it's going to absorb a whole lot of glazing medium. Perfect for portraits or if you're trying to make very smooth seas or things like that, trompe l'oeil painting, where you do not want to see that brush stroke um, in the paint. You want it to be very flat and enamel-like. These are ideal bristles for that. Now the SP mix is kind of filling in what used to be called a Fitch brush. Fitch are a type of weasel, um, which I'm sure at this point now is either hard to get or impossible to get because of sanctions on growers for it being um, humanely treated as far as you know in nesting boxes where they had no more live trapping where they have to have above freezing temperatures and all that which is wonderful for animal welfare for brushes it's not great because it doesn't have the same body and thickness so with the SP mix what it's done is used very soft synthetics with natural hair to still give you that performance of the SP Max, 
but without using the Fitch and the Weasels that, um, um, you know, are going to be kind of the, the traditional animals that there's either sanctions on or that you can't get anymore. So it's, it gives you that same performance without the cost and without the issues. Um, the Kalinsky, this is actually still red Kalinsky, but because these are handmade, a brush uh, manufacturer has an artisan that's making these. That's why you're getting this beautiful kind of head on that Kalinsky brush with that beautiful roundness to it. So perfect for glazing either one of these. That Kalinsky is just going to be that tiny bit softer. Okay. All right. And again, I apologize. I, I saw somebody say that this is, I know it's bumping and bobbing around. Unfortunately, I am the camera person and this is my home studio because we were working out of the office, but we didn't want to not give you guys this to be able to have to watch. Um, also, I know that a lot, there's a lot of people that watch us on YouTube. This has to be uploaded, uh, downloaded first from Facebook, then uploaded to YouTube. It should be done in 24 hours, okay? Guys, so that you'll be able to watch that there, um, especially if you watch that like on a bigger screen like your TV. All right, so, Another natural hair style brush that's kind of gone the wayward, uh, gone off where you can't get it anymore is Mongoose. Um, the the uh, Kevrin brushes of old that Raphael used to make were one of those uh, workhorse brushes. Mongoose hair is thick. It's um, very absorbent still though. It can, uh, it's not super thick and stiff like hog but it's not soft and velvety like Kalinsky. It's the perfect workhorse brush. Um, and when it uh, was ruled that mongoose, because they're federally protected now in, in countries where it, they used to be you know, imported from, you can't get mongoose anymore. It's illegal to get use the hair. Now they've had to come up with their own version of mongoose. And I'm really proud and pleased to say, because I am a mongoose junkie, um, I saw mongoose brushes from, you know, 20, 25 years ago, uh, that this not only matches the ability of the mongoose style brushes, but this surpasses it. And I was able to get involved uh, with this German company to make these for us specifically uh, with multiple testing going back and forth. They're a wonderful brush that's got, you can still see that nice stiffness to the bristle, but because it's got that nice hair blend of natural and synthetic, it's still very thirsty. It's got the ability to pull up a lot of glazing medium, but it's gonna give you a little bit of brush stroke with the fluid mediums, and then some brush stroke, not as much as with the hog. So these are fantastic brushes. They're handmade, hand tied, sustainable hardwoods, just beautifully balanced. These are probably of all the kind of natural and synthetic hair brushes. Sorry, the dog is now draining and kicking her pen. These, um, the Hamburg Premier, are going to be your workhorse style brush, that, that mongoose style hair. Um, simply beautiful brushes. Uh, Munich Premier, again, taking something that was already really, really awesome, like that natural hog bristle, and adding the ability to put in some synthetic filaments of different sizes, why would you do that? There's a lot of people I know that are thinking that. I was kind of thinking the same thing about where well, there's already natural hog and there's already synthetic hog. Why do we need this combination of both? Just gonna say, water mixable oil people, this brush is designed specifically for you. People that are super rough on um, hog bristle brushes or even synthetic brushes, this is for you. Uh, water mixable oils, the reason I'm saying that would be great, that synthetic hair, the amount of synthetic hair in it makes it so it cleans super duper easy. Or if you're an oil person that always kind of is bad about leaving your brushes some and get, they get kind of grungy, these brushes clean magnificently well. They're the Munich Premier brushes. They're handmade, hand tied, those beautiful sustainable hardwood handles but they give you the best of both worlds with synthetic and hog bristle kind of married into one. Um, people that are super rough on brushes because of the um, kind of proprietary synthetic blend that they put in it, it really helps keep brush 
um, shape, um, even with a lot of wear and tear on it. So um, they are really nice brushes. They're called Munich Premier. Um, and a lot of other people are starting to now, I think, pick up on with the popularity of brushes like these, that these are a good idea. Um, but not every brush maker is adept at working with both you know, materials together. So these are super successful for kind of giving you that best of both worlds scenario. Now, um, sorry, here's our little things I have behind them so I could kind of pick them up easily. Now we're going to something that's kind of a, a very unique, very unusual uh, brush that's, uh, I'm just going to have to show it to you because trying to explain it doesn't make so much sense as just looking at them. These are really strange and unusual brushes, but let's find out why. Um, Chelsea Classic Studios, the, um, the manufacturer of those has come up with these nouveau brushes. They are hog bristles, so it gives you that ability to, you know, pick up either thinned, medium, thicker paint, but wash it out really easily with these really unusual ferrules. Thinner handle, magnetic tip to them, okay? It's Chelsea Classical Studios. It's the Nuevo brush. This has a magnet. There are these little medallions in the pack that you can get to go with them. You can stick them up in a windowsill. You can put them upside down on your easel, whatever, and that will click to them and hang upside down. Now, this brush is pretty long. It gives you that kind of, with that magnet there and the weight, you want to hold it at the right place. Now, these are, the guy that developed these has an intense love of traditional classical painting mediums. The classes he teaches are all very traditional Renaissance style painting. Um, these are like the old brushes before they learned how to make ferrules and things like that, where they just glued them around, you know, these very thin um, handles. It gives you kind of that old world style, but then he's also come up with an extension where if that's not long enough, hold on for a second, you want the balance for this, that gives you even more room. What, what's the point of this? It's keeping you back from your painting as you paint. This painting is way over there. It's been varnished, so I know it's gonna protect it. I am pretty far away. You can see these other brushes down here. It's keeping me where I can really look at, at my painting easily from far enough back where I can make corrections. I can see mistakes really easily, but I could use, do glazing with this. I could do heavier paint with this. Um, it's just a really unique, different style brush. It may not be for every painter, and they've got five different sizes down to this adorable little one, but it's something very different. If you know you're bad about uh, painting far enough back with the handles, this would be a good trainer brush, like training wheels, for getting used to kind of being further back, learning how to control your, your brush from further back, okay? So something different and unique, wanted to add that in because that is a style that's out there on the market that it's good to know about. Um, I did not see a lot of questions going by because it's kind of hard for me to focus on what I'm doing as opposed to what's going on and kind of checking my notes and things as well. So I will go back through all these comments. Come back to me. And join us every Tuesday. This is a show we do all the time. We are 144 episodes deep and we're moving on from there um, for three years. So there's all of these shows to go back and watch in your downtime for, uh, to learn new techniques, for education about other supplies that might interest you. Um, in the description on this show, there's always two different links to two different documents and that gives you all of the shows and the links to be able to go watch them. Okay, so next week is the short handle brush episode. Uh, we will see you then and uh, we'll get to learn about those. Keep an eye out, submit. Um, there is a button where you can um, subscribe to the channel so that when we go live to use brushes and talk about those as I finish the painting from our oil episode, 
um, you'll be able to see brushes in action, some of these brushes and how they work, and we'll talk about those things while I'm actually painting the painting. Okay, guys? Everybody, take care, be creative, and we'll see you soon. Bye.